On Larry King now, Angels superstar Albert Pujols. Did no, you expect lost. to do this well? Of course. I mean, you look at the, the clubhouse and, and look at the talent and the ability. I mean, we have the best player in the gang, uh, Mike Trout. Do you put a lot of pressure on yourself? Uh, I think everybody puts pressure, you know. Uh, I love to have uh, men on second base with two hours, and run, uh, you know, game winning run on base. And one thing that I had, that Tony La Russa had taught me was every year bat, take it like it's your last or about your career. And every other bad take, like, it's Game 7 of the World Series. And I did that since you then won in 2001. Plus, why out of proportion to the population do Dominicans succeed in the majors? Why? Maybe the plantain and the food that we eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's today on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King. Now we are in the beautiful Diamond Club. It overlooks home plate at beautiful Angel Stadium of Anaheim. And I'm joined by a future Hall of Famer, nine-time All-Star, three-time National League MVP, two-time Golden Globe, Globe winner. I got him in the Golden Globes. I got him in movies now. <laughs> World Series chef. He's, he's one of the great players ever to, to grace a baseball field. Albert Pujols, the only player in history to bat at least 300 with 30 doubles and 30 home runs and 100 RBIs in his first 10 seasons. And this year, the 26th player in Major League history to hit 500 home runs. When you started, <laughs> were you confident? Did you think you would be a great ball player? Uh, never imagined, you know, that my career was going to take off so quick. Uh, obviously, I need to thank God first for the opportunity and the ability and the talent that he has given me to play this game. And uh, growing up in the Dominican Republic, uh, all I wanted was just uh, an opportunity to play professional baseball. Did you know you were good? Uh, I was a decent player down in the DR. I was uh, really, you know, obviously I can compete uh, and, and got better. Uh, you know, I was one of the players that, I was 14 years old playing with 15, 16, 17 year old guys, you know, so I was able to, to learn from my mistake and, and learning quick. Why did you leave the Did the family leave? Yeah, my family, you know, my grandma, my dad. Uh, me and my dad, we were kind of the last one that, that left the country to come to the United States. Uh, in 1980, I believe, 1987, 1989, my, one of my aunt and uncle came to the United States. And grew up in the Midwest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you're a Midwesterner. You told me that once. You love the Midwest. Yeah, I love it. It's, uh, you know, obviously it gets hot in the summer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, playing there for 11 years, uh, it was, uh, it was a really tough weather, but uh, you get used to. Your manager, Mike Socia here in California, says, you're a once-in-a-generation player. No doubt the gold standard for what guys do in the batter's box and in the field. A gold glove first baseman putting up incredible numbers. He loves managing you. What do you think of Mike? He's awesome. Great manager. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to have uh, two Hall of Fame. One going into uh, the Hall of Fame the next couple of days, Tony Oruza, and leaving St. Louis and coming now to Southern California and have Mike Socha, you know, as my manager is just uh, a, a blessing. You know, he's a guy that's a winner. Uh, we respect him in the clubhouse and uh, he's, he's our leader. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, this year showing, you know, uh, what he told us in spring training, uh, coming out right off the gate and uh, right now being only two games out of first place. And our main goal is uh, to accomplish and hopefully bring that World Series uh, ring back to the city of Anaheim. What was the hardest part about leaving St. Louis? Uh, I think, you know, leaving my family behind. Uh, never, I was never away from, from my family for more than seven or eight days. And uh, I was away from, from them for almost two and a half months before they all can get uh, here to Southern California. So that was tough. Uh, and, and it took us about a year and a half uh, to get used to to that, and now you know I have my own, my whole family here, my wife uh, homeschooling our kids, and uh, just uh, a blessing. Yeah. Why? Uh, she felt that the Lord just put that in her heart uh, last year. She was like, you know, we need to be where you are, and uh, you know, she just uh, being obedient, and I'm I'm with her 100%. Uh, uh, you know, it was somebody that. After a game, you know, when I had a tough night, she's my best friend, you know, I, uh, she's the one that, that I kind of pretty much open myself and just uh, deal with the things that, that happens in the field and not be able to share that with him because with her uh, after a game, 
uh, because she was in St. Louis and it's one o'clock over there, I don't want to wake her up. It was tough. And now being here, she way after again, we kind of arrived together back home and, and just having the kids around, we enjoying them. There was a time you thought you'd never leave the Midwest though, right? Yeah, there was a time, but uh, obviously, uh, you know, it didn't work out. Life and, changes. Uh, yeah, it's, exactly. And um, I'm, I'm getting used to, to being here in Southern California. Great organization, great owner. Uh, great, yeah, he is. Great, great. Uh, we have a great front office, and, uh, you know, we're putting a great team out there to hopefully accomplish our goal. Do you like the American League? I, now I, I do. Uh, I mean, the, the first DH. year was tough. Uh, yeah, DH, uh, you know, obviously give you a little bit of uh, opportunity not to take a full day off, but uh, almost a half day off because you have for the game you're on the bench, or <laughs> actually the whole game. But uh, it's, it's something that I got used to and, uh, this year, uh, DH, more than ever. And, of course, uh, with a 10 year contract probably late in the career, you will DH, right? Probably. Um, you know, I'm still young. I'm only 34 years old. And obviously, uh, I have battled a couple of injuries in my knee and then my heel. Last year was pretty tough, but uh, I'm getting better. Do you put a lot of pressure on yourself? Uh, I think everybody puts pressure, you know. I mean, uh, every time you wear that uniform. Uh, but uh, I think uh, you work hard for that. Uh, I love to have uh, men on second base with two hour, and, uh, you know, game winning run on base. Uh, just you, you, that stuff. You don't train. It's not like you go into a workout room and say, "Okay, I'm gonna train to try to get that base hit off the middle and, and get that winning run in." It's something that uh, you get a lot of our bats and then more experience, and you get better, and it's almost come natural. So it's something that having success in that situation help you out big time. So the term clutch hitter. Yeah. Uh, we imagine that the clutch hitter rises to the occasion. He likes the man on second, right? All the time. Yeah, I actually like it on third base more, more than <laughs> second base. <laughs> but, hit a fly ball. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's something that, that I'm comfortable with, and you know, I never put my head down. Uh, you know, you, you obviously uh, gonna fail you more, and and this game, the, the success that you had, because nobody can batter 1,000 or 500, you know. No one ever hit stuff, Never, you know. So. Derek Jeter said, when you play baseball, you have to understand failure. Exactly. Because you will fail more, more than, than this five success. out of 10 times. Mm -hmm. And you know that everybody say, oh, at the end of the year, it's always even up, and never is even so. <laughs> you know, and you, you just give more at bats and the hits that you get. Albert Pujols, our special guest, we're at Angel Stadium. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're at Angel Stadium with the great Albert Pujols, who will walk into the Hall of Fame. He might not have to wait five years. Well, everybody does, but he might not have to. What do you make of the Angels this year? They have a great ball club. It's going to go uh, down to the wire, huh? Uh, yeah, uh, obviously the West is... is Getting better and better every year. Seattle's I've been here better. for three years. Yeah, Houston is playing great. They're always tough. I can, um, you know, when we play them, uh, you got Oakland, you got ourselves, and you got Texas. Uh, we never take anything for granted. We have a great ball club, and I always say if we can stay healthy for a whole year, then you can see what we are able to do, and that's something that we've been doing this year. You Did know, you we expect lost. to do this well? Our team? Yeah. Of course. I mean, you look at the, the clubhouse and, and look at the talent and the ability. I mean, we had the best player in the gang, uh, Mike Trout. It's just amazing, you know, uh, watching that kid taking the field every day. You got Josh, you, you got Weaver, myself. You have a great group of mix of player, young player, veteran player that, that know how to win. And, and obviously, that's what you want in the clubhouse. And our bullpen has got so much better and starting pitcher. Now uh, we got C.J. Wilson down for a couple of weeks, but hopefully when he comes back, he pick it up right away. What do you think of Trout? As easy as I can get, two words, the best player in the game. I mean, he's amazing. Uh, it just, uh, the, what he can do in the field and the way that he can pitch, I mean, he has a, he played great defense, great arm, power. I mean, they say that he got all five two. I think he had 10 tools because <laughs> you can, you have to <laughs> multiply by two, you know, it's just. Uh, What's he like great. as a guy? Uh, that's that's uh, that's what impressed me the most. At such a young age, you know, that he don't lay all this media and uh, uh, contract talk and all that get to his head. And he's he's one of the kids that 
he's just humble, come from a great family, and his goal every day, every time he takes that field is to help us up to win, and uh, that's why I admire him most. And always want to get better, no matter the success that he has, uh, always want to get better. We lost Tony Gwynn this year. Oof. Did you know him? I knew him for a little bit. I uh, played a lot against him uh, when I was coming up. I was honored and blessed to have the opportunity of playing uh, in this shared the same locker room in 2001, his last after game of hanging Kyle Rick. And, and uh, it just, uh, you know, it was uh, not just uh, the league lost a, a great man and a great human being, but, uh, you know, our family too, because we, you know, we were getting pretty close to each other oh, too, yeah? because, you know, we started talking several times about him coming to some of my foundation event and uh, it's just amazing. I had the opportunity when I was in college to have a videotape for my coach that, uh, that he gave me to, to start his swing and um, you know that I picked a lot of his brain. But you were you a hitter completely different than Gwen. Well it doesn't matter but still when you when you see the career that Tony Wing had, you know, it was just amazing. You always want to pick the crap. You always want to pick the brain. I mean, uh, the game about staying inside the ball and little things like that. It doesn't matter what kind of type of hitter you are, you still want to stay inside the ball, let the ball travel and uh, that's how you're going to have more more uh, more success in this game, but uh, obviously he had a great career. By the end of the day, he was a better person off the field. Did you get to know Derek Jeter at all? Derek, uh, playing against him over the years, uh, this offseason, I got to go to his golf tournament, and uh, I mean, uh, that's somebody. Never had a problem. <laughs> he's amazing. Uh, just somebody, you know, that I uh, always respect the gang, and he's, he's the captain, and he's going to be missed, you know, next year. Uh, playing against the Yankees and don't see number two uh, mm -hmm. in shortstop, it's going to be tough. We had a mutual friend. I loved him, Stan Musial. Oof! What a fact. He, there was. I saw him in Brooklyn. He killed us. He was the best hitter I ever saw because we were National League fans, so I didn't get to see Ted Williams much. What'd you think of him? As a, he was an amazing person, wasn't he? Just amazing. Uh, still, towards the end of his life, you know the things that he will was still doing for the city of St. Louis. Uh, just a great role model for everybody. And, um, you know, just a kid never watched the Cardinal play. And I got to the big league in 2001. And I start people started throwing the name of Stan Musial and comparing myself with Stan. And, uh, you know, I was like, hey, man, there's only one man, and that can be only Stan Musial. You know, just a, a, like I said, great human being. I have the opportunity to be around him uh, yeah. a lot of time. And I wish, uh, you know, I could have picked his brain a little bit more, but obviously, because the things that he was going through, it was pretty tough for him uh, to stay around. Uh, came to uh, many, many events uh, for my foundation, and that was and something was that you know, I would never forget. And you play harmonica. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever, Albert, doubt your faith? Never. I mean, never. I, Even never. when bad things happen? You know, because that's the main, the main thing, you know, when, you know, the Lord has taught me so much in my career. Even even my first year moving from St. Louis here, I mean, what I went through and how tough it was, and yeah, big contract, I mean, big year for me, and not hitting a home run my first six weeks of the season, uh, it was rough, and I was looking at myself, and I was like, God, you know, I trust in you. You moved me from St. Louis to come here to Southern California for a reason. I don't know why, but uh, I just trust you with everything, and look at my year still. Didn't hit a home run in, in, in April, didn't hit a home run in September, and I still got 107, 108 RBI. I hit 288 or 285 and 30 homers, you know. So imagine the two months that I didn't hit any homers. I would have still probably hit 40 plus homers and drive about 30 more RBI. Do you think he was testing you? Um, the Lord tests you, you know, and, and, and something that, you know, uh, you just need to make sure that at the end of the day who you represent. Uh, when you take that field, and that's somebody that he has taken me to a level that I feel, you know, trust and, and comfortable, and no matter what kind of challenge comes to my way, I, I go to the Lord and pray with my family, and, and that's how we handle it. He's one of a kind. When we come back, I'm going to ask you about what's so special about the Dominican Republic <laughs> after this. We're back with the great Albert Pujols. It's afternoon. It's a Wednesday. It's a Tuesday afternoon. The 
Angels were about to take on a very good Oriole team who are in first place in the Eastern Division. Wild year in baseball. 19 yeah. teams still playoff eligible. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. All right. What? Is it the water in the Dominican Republic? Do they do <laughs> some? What? Why? <laughs> Out of proportion to the population, do Dominicans succeed in the majors? Why? Maybe the plantain and the food that we eat. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? No, I, I don't know. You uh, played on crummy fields, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, rocks, uh, that's how I grew It's getting better. Uh, the organization, is, uh, every organization investing a lot of money in their minor league system and, and down in the DR. But they give us pitchers, infielders, outfielders, long ball hitters, singles hitters. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty special, and it's pretty precious to call the Dominican Republic my country. I guess it's uh, you know something that uh, is either education or baseball. You know, is there good coaches there? Yeah, I think they're they're great coaches. I mean, you go in winter league, uh, it's, it's nothing yeah. compared better than winter ball. You know, you being in the final and the and the winter league, and it's it's unbelievable. People playing the conga and music, and it's loud. <laughs> It feel like almost uh, playing winter league down there. I never had that opportunity, but I seen games. It's almost like playoff atmosphere every day. Do you go home at all? Do you go back to Dominican? Definitely. Uh, every year uh, at the end of the season, in, uh, around November, uh, I always take uh, a trip with my foundation, the Poor's Family Foundation. We what go is that there. foundation? What does it do? We do a lot of work with uh, kids with Down syndrome. As you know, I have a daughter with Down syndrome. His, her name is Isabella. And, uh, you know, since you, 2001, uh, when I was in St. Louis, we uh, got together with the Down Syndrome Association. I established my foundation in 2005, 05, 05. And no, I wear number five, <laughs> so that was uh, a, a great year for us. And then. Uh, in 2006, we started making our first mission trip down to the DR. We take do doctors, dentists, and we start different programs down in the Dominican Republic over the last Have we nine made years. advances? Oh, every year, every year. I mean, f from 2005 to now and the programs that we have set there, it's just amazing. You know, now we not only working in one community now, we've been working probably about five or six uh, different communities around the DR, and that's something that, that, that was our goal. And, I can't thank our, our fans uh, and people that support our foundation enough, you know, because uh, if it wouldn't be for them, uh, we wouldn't be able to make this trip down there. How old is your daughter now? She's 16. I have uh, five. I have a 16-year-old girl, Isabella, AJ, uh, who's 13. Then I got Sophia, who's eight, Ezra, who's four, and a uh, 22-month-old uh, baby, Esther Gray. So Is that it now? Uh, that's it for now. <laughs> no, no, we always wanted a big family, but I think uh, uh, so right now that's it. So the firstborn had D Down syndrome. Down syndrome. Did you fear it happening in others? You know what? It was something that uh, having uh, Bella is. Uh, it was so special. Uh, she had taught me so much in my life too, and being around these kids uh, to me, that's my passion. Uh, if you get to my website, poolsfamilyfoundation.org, you see all the events that we do with the, those kids. And, uh, you know, what we've been doing the last three years, we spent our foundation. Now we're here in Southern California, Nashville, um, uh, Kansas City. And so, our goal is to try to continue to do that, be, a, you know, helping. We have a kid here uh, who's uh, working at the stadium. Now we set a program that every major stadium is gonna provide a job for a kid with Down syndrome. I mean, uh, our foundation wow. uh, pushed that through to Major League Baseball and they partnered with us this year and it's amazing. It's the Pujols Family Foundation dot, Foundation dot org. Dot org, Pujols Family Foundation dot org. A couple of the baseball things and then we'll have our last segment with a lot of questions from viewers and stuff. Musial once said that he could have 10 straight at bats, not got a hit. That did not affect the 11th at bat. He tuned the past out. Do you do that? The saying, I think, of, you know, you can talk to great hitters like Miguel Cabrera, Mike Trout. Um, you know, that, that's how it's supposed to be. Um, you know, you can't take that our bat, whether it was positive with the base hit or homer, and take it to the next one. It's like one day at a time, one at a bat at a time. And one thing that I had, that Tony La Russa had taught me, was every air bat take it like it's your last air bat of your career. And every air bat take like it's game seven of the World Series. And I did that since oh. then one in 2001, and it ha has helped me with 
the success that I have. So I give a lot of credit to Tony, even though he doesn't like to take any credit. But, you know, he told me that. Another thing that he told me was, like, hey, what do you prefer to hit, 300 or get 30 homers? And obviously, you know, homers is the thing. Oh, I say 30 homers is like rookie mistake. If you hit 300, you're going to have your share homer, your share RBI, right. and you're going to have more opportunity that you're going to help this ball club because you're going to come through with a base and score that run from second base or third base. And that's something that, you know, as a rookie, you don't know that. But the quicker that I learned it, the better it was for me. To Are have you a fan set. of other sports? Yeah, I love golf. I love golf, golf. basketball. I, more of, uh, I like college basketball more than the NBA. Really? But I, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of the NBA too. But I, I, I actually follow in golf a lot. You ever play football? No football. My coach in high school was pushing me really, really, really bad. You've been a great play tight play. end. Yeah, but it was just something that I uh, <laughs> that I didn't like much. We'll be right back with our remaining moments with Albert Pujols. We're going to have some fun. Don't go away. We're back with our remaining moments with Albert Pujols, one of the all-time baseball greats. We have some social media questions, the yeah. world of social media. <laughs> Bobby, Vivara, yeah. Bobby Vivara on Facebook. Besides winning a World Series, what great accomplishment do you look forward to next? 3,000 hits or 600 home runs? Wow, that's a great question. I would say that, uh, you know, 3,000 hits, that's something that is really, really hard to do. Uh, is uh, you have to really have a great success in this Especially level. Especially for a slugger. And then uh, a, a great success and then also uh, a long career to be able to accomplish that. But I can take either or, you know, obviously. But the, the 3,000 here, I would say that's something that I How look How about for. both? That would be great. Okay. <laughs> At Pujols5 via Twitter, there's a, a Pujols5. After you hit a home run, do you enjoy standing there and admiring the fact that you just crushed the ball? Uh, I think if it, uh, you know if it's a long homer or uh, the, the moment always determine you know what you what you're gonna do if it's a game winning homer obviously it's something that it doesn't happen every day but uh, you enjoy it uh, every time you hit a homer and because you know that the fans come to see that you know sometimes that, when you admire it though like Puig mm -hmm. who I watch a lot well, I don't admire it like that I admire when some homer but he stops no. and waits and sometimes it's a double. Yeah, you have to respect the other side too. And uh, I think it comes a moment where you can do it and there is other moment that you have to respect the other side because you got you 25 the players and you show up the pitcher too, you know. So you don't do that? You don't well, hot dog? Yeah, I, you know, there's some time that I admire. <laughs> I probably no, don't do it as bad, but I think everybody in this level do Karina that. Karina Ruiz, what's the best and worst part about living in Southern California? Or what do you like the best about it? The best? No, the weather. I mean, you can't What's beat this weather. What's the worst? Weather. I don't think there's the worst thing so traffic? far. I would say that traffic, but I'm not in L.A. You know, I'm here in Anaheim, so the traffic is not as bad. At Piera 4, if you weren't a professional ball player, what would you do? If I wasn't a professional baseball player, what would I do? I don't know. I mean, I, I would say, you know, continue to do my my engineer work, you know, I wanted to go to school and be an engineer. That was your major then? And that was something that I wanted to do. Now we play a little game of if you only knew. Just okay. out of nowhere. You remember the first girl you ever kissed? Yeah. What was her name? Achanti. <laughs> Down in the yard. Oh. Yeah. But uh, don't uh, get me in trouble oh, now. No. How old? How old were you, Albert? <laughs> I was 12. That's late now. Yeah, well, that was 12. <laughs> Favorite city besides Anaheim to play in? Besides Anaheim to play, it's San Luis. Uh, it's a great city to play, a great town. Least favorite city to go to? Uh, I always say Milwaukee. You know, it's just very boring. <laughs> yeah. Ballpark with the best facilities? Bizarre ours? Yeah. Uh, I would say Yankee Stadium. The new Yankee Stadium is uh, it's pretty awesome. City with the toughest fans? Philadelphia. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, Philly. A superpower you'd like to have? Superpower I like to have? The speed, I would say. I mean, I, I, I wish I can be faster. <laughs> Proudest moment? Proudest moment, uh, just giving my life to the Lord, I would say. A Major League Baseball rule you'd like to change? I would say uh, all that, uh, I don't know, maybe that Bach move, 
It's something so you can't bro. balk to second base, right? Well, no, the, uh, well, now you can balk to third base if you don't throw the ball. Like You don't yeah. have that first and third move anymore. Right, so, right. so I would say that balk move. Uh, uh, biggest prankster in the locker room? I don't know. You're getting me in trouble now. <laughs> I mean, is there a, a guy who makes fun with those little tricks? And Yeah, I mean, there, there's few. We, we got right, a few we guys. Want, but, all, right. Uh, all right, who's the quietest teammate? The quietest teammate, uh, I would say Josh, Josh Hamilton. Yeah. You know, he's real quiet. He's, uh, funniest you know, teammate. Funniest teammate. Uh, wow. Gary Richards, maybe? And it's because uh, <laughs> sometimes you tell him something, he forgets right away. <laughs> and, 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 you know, we always <laughs> make funny. fun of him. Pre-game ritual. Uh, I like to just come in and just have a little bit like my routine and all that, a little bit of fruit and, you know, you don't eat shower. Much? No much. I don't like to eat that much uh, to, to go. Is there uh, a play. song you can't get out of your head? A song that I can get out of, I got many, many songs that I listen. I listen to Christian music, so that's kind of my routine every day around 6, 625. I like to put my headphones in and just like to worship music. Secret talent. Secret talent. I don't know. I think I have any no, secret none. talent. I think uh, every singing. talent that I got, no, I'm mm -hmm. terrible singing. Most if, you, if you want to know about that, ask my kid. <laughs> most embarrassing moment on the field? Uh, I think it was one time I was going for, for a pop-up and I kind of fell over and he might knock my head on that death circle. It was kind of wet, so I would blame the weather for that one. <laughs> what keeps you up at night? Thinking about you know the game, uh, you know, wish I would have done this different and that. But I think the beauty thing that if my kids are awake, I forget about what happened in the field, and it's time to be with the family. Uh, and biggest adjustment when you moved to the United States? Uh, I would say learn how to speak English. I mean, that was you know, I, it, it took me four months almost and to still go to school and not knowing any English. It was really rough. You've done for very me. well. So I'm still learning, but uh, it's just uh, it's been amazing. I won't change a the thing. There are two kinds of angels, and he is both. Appreciate a special it. thanks to Albert Pujols. Thank you so much. Of the Los of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, or as my son likes to say, the Anaheim Angels. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us on this edition of Larry King Now, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for